This is CNN Breaking News. A major development this morning out of the Supreme Court. The justices have agreed to take up the president's travel ban case with us. Jeffrey Tubin, CNN senior legal analyst, as well as Michael Zeldin, CNN legal analyst and former federal prosecutor. Okay, a few things first to you, Jeffrey Tubin. Uh, what do we know about whether or not the Supreme Court granted the stay here? Meaning, will the travel ban take effect or is it still basically held off? Partial. It, it, it split the difference there. It, it, it upheld the stay in part, but um, invalidated the stay, let the, let the order go into effect in part. What does that mean How, in practical in terms? In practical terms. I was worried you were going to ask me that really? question, Really? How Ms. it Harlow. affects people's and, lives? And the answer is, it's not clear to me. Okay. I, I mean, I don't want to give a wrong answer. Th this is a very unusual situation. I'm just trying to... Re the, the, the court usually issues a one-paragraph mm -hmm. order when it grants review of a case. This is a 16-page opinion, which I think indicates the complexity of the travel ban case. The other thing that the court did is they put it down for argument in October. So this stay will, will remain in effect through October at least. Par partially. Uh, partially. Yeah, the, the partial stay will remain in effect uh, through October. But this case will be argued at the beginning of the term. Again, the, the three justices who wanted the stay invalidated completely were Justice Thomas, Justice, Ale Justice Alito, and Justice Gorsuch, indicating, as we saw throughout the day today, mm -hmm. that Justice Gorsuch is aligning himself with Justice Thomas, the most conservative member of the court, and giving a very clear signal of where Justice Gorsuch is going to be over the future on all of on these, all these cases. Uh, yes. Opinions that we've seen come forth today. This is incredibly significant, Michael Zeldin. As you continue, Jeffrey, to read this 16 page uh, order that has come down, uh, also to the team in the control room, if we can get that map ready to show people the countries that are affected where this travel ban was affecting people coming into the United States. We'll bring that up and remind you in just a moment. But what also complicates this, there you go, right there, Michael Zeldin, to you, is the fact that this was not established law, meaning sort of that 90-day review period was still in place, and that complicates things. This is taking up what the Fourth Circuit and the Ninth Circuit appellate courts had ruled against the administration on, but yet it is still sort of up in the air and still complex and still being worked through. That is different from cases that the Supreme Court usually hears. Well, that's right. It's, it's, it's alive, if you will. Yeah. And um, there's still immigration uh, ongoing. There's still acts of terrorism ongoing. There is vetting that's ongoing because of the way the Ninth Circuit ruled in its um, case as opposed to the, the Fourth Circuit. Time is passing, though, and, and in some sense that doesn't necessarily help the administration's position, which was that they needed this travel ban immediately so as to prevent a terrorist attack from occurring in the United mm -hmm. States. Well, you know, tick, 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 we're, we're moving forward in time from that emergence ne emergency need for this, and that seems to maybe undermine the argument that this is really national security based as opposed to religious based as it goes forward to argument. That's a very interesting point. Um, I, if yes. I can just, I think I figured out about the stay okay. here. Um, basically, um, the, the stay applies if the person seeking to come into the country has a bona fide relationship with someone who was already here. Okay. It's a, a, a relative, member, family a member, life. business perhaps relationship. Um, w the, the stay does not, th that, that the ban is intact for people who don't have any sort of relationship with uh, someone in the United States. So they can be kept out for the 90 days, people who have no relationship with someone for in the United of States. These, for many of these, those six those, countries. Those six countries. But of course, the, Iraq was taken off right. with version 2.0. Um, Jeffrey Tubin, that is a partial win for the Trump administration. It is certainly a partial win for the Trump administration, uh, but it is also a partial win for the uh, state attorneys general mm -hmm. and the civil rights groups that are challenging the, uh, the travel ban, cause, so they can say the people who have relationships with people in the United States, family, the question, it, it further complicates things because the question becomes to what extent, to what degree? Second cousin, third cousin, is I, it immediate family? I, I know you're yeah, still I, Well, I mean, it, it says a bona fide relationship okay. means like a real relationship, yeah. not a, not a pretext, pretextual one. 
Uh, but, you know, how that works out in the real world is going to be up to lower court judge. The president's own words, uh, and Michael, I'll get to you in just one moment, but the president's own words in the Ninth Circuit and in the Fourth Circuit when his team was arguing this came back to haunt him, talking about a Muslim ban and surrogates of his, like Rudy Giuliani, talking about it in that way. That has to be a concern for the administration as, it, as this case is heard again in the high court. It, it is, and, and I think this is something that the president may be in pretty good shape on. I, I have been surprised throughout this yeah. process how much courts have used campaign language in deciding the merits of, the, uh, of this case. I have always thought that uh, the Trump administration has a better chance of winning in the Supreme Court than it did uh, in the lower courts. The Supreme Court has traditionally been very reluctant to use the president's words mm -hmm. as opposed to the text of an order, the text of a statute, uh, to, to, in, in evaluating its constitutionality. And Michael Zeldin, this is a president who promised repeatedly through tweets and as he spoke, you know, we'll see you in court, we'll take this all the way to the Supreme Court, and now he essentially has his, his wish granted on that front. Well, that's right, and we'll see how it turns out. Sometimes you have to be careful what you wish for. I, I think, Jeffrey, though, uh, what will be interesting as you read through this is what is the pre-existing relationship? Does all the uni do all the universities and other businesses who have visa plans for employment and student uh, applications constitute a relationship that is not prohibited by the, the stay if there's no relationship? Also, it seems like it's a win for the individual plaintiff in Hawaii who was claiming that his mother-in-law couldn't come in, and it seems now that she'll not be covered by the stay. Is that how you read it as well, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, the, the, the Hawaii plaintiff is mentioned by name uh, as someone who will uh, benefit from the stay that is still in effect. But mother-in-law, I mean, that is a classic family relationship. Um, the, Whether the, you want uh, it to be or not. Right, yeah, yeah, I, I refrain from any mother-in-law jokes there. Um, and an American individual or entity that has a bona fide relationship with a particular person seeking to enter the country as a refugee can claim concrete harm and thus is covered it by the state. Says, but Jeffrey, it points out there, as you just read it, as a refugee. Right, right. Well, that, I mean, that, that, that's part of the story. But it also says entity, yeah. which suggests, to answer Michael's question, my, Michael's question, that students who have a relationship with, with the university, university would be able to claim hardship and be allowed to. Which was a part of the Washington Attorney General, right. Attorney's General argument. Um, I, I should also note when, when, you know, part of the argument, as, as Michael rightly brought up, that the Trump administration has made, Jeffrey, is we need this in effect immediately to protect this country against terror. However, critics pointed to the fact that none of the four countries where the 9-11 hijackers were from are included in this ban, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, and Egypt. Is that going to hurt? Is that part of the argument going to be difficult for them to overcome in front of the Supreme Court? You know, uh, w one of the arguments, uh, I, I, it's part of the mix. I don't know if it, it, is, it is the key argument. One of the, the Trump administration has said just because, um, I mean, j just because we don't ban immigration from all dangerous countries doesn't mean we can't ban immigration from the most dangerous countries. I mean, it, it, it's so... I don't think it's a uh, necessarily the the dispositive, the winning argument in the case, but it'll certainly be part of the mix, just as the president's words in the campaign, his repeated invocation of a Muslim ban, um, the fact that uh, Rudy Giuliani was recruited to sort of clean this up, make it into a respectable Muslim ban. How much the Supreme Court will deal with that is a very interesting question. Historically, they don't. Historically, they don't get into yeah. the motivation of these cases behind these decisions. I'm hearing we have Jessica Schneider, who is outside of the Supreme Court, with more on this ruling as we are dissecting it uh, page by page of this 16-page uh, order that has come down. Jessica, what else are you hearing? Well, Poppy, I think it's fair to say that this is somewhat of an unexpected opinion decision by the Supreme Court and also somewhat intricate. So first of all, the Supreme Court has in fact agreed to take up arguments on this uh, travel ban, the president's executive order, his second executive order. Those arguments will be hap happening next term. But in addition, the Supreme Court also allowing part of this travel ban to go into effect. It's sort of a win-win in parts for both uh, the people who filed these lawsuits as well 
well as the Trump administration. So the Supreme Court saying that yes, you can in fact ban some foreign nationals from the United States as we await arguments on this. However, as it pertains to the people who filed these lawsuits, those people, their relatives, can in fact come into the United States. The particular language that the Supreme Court used in this is saying that the travel ban cannot be applied to foreign nationals who have a credible claim of a, of a bona fide relationship with a person or entity in the United States. The Supreme Court then went on to cite the particular plaintiffs in this case who in fact do have that bona fide relationship, the familial relationship. Of course, in Hawaii, the plaintiff was uh, suing to get his mother-in-law a visa to get into this country. What's interesting about that case, however, is that that plaintiff's mother-in-law was actually granted a visa to come into this country over the weekend, so perhaps a bit of a moot point there. But yes, in fact, somewhat of a victory for the people who filed these claims. But of course, the Trump administration will also claim victory in this, saying that yes, we can continue to keep people out of this country who do not have a relationship with anyone or any institution here. Interestingly, the court also mentioned people who do have a relationship with an institution here. They mentioned specifically students at the University of Hawaii who do have that close relationship. So it doesn't just extend to the familial realm, it also extends to institutions and people who might come here to work or go to school. So it'll be interesting to see how exactly this is applied, how exactly the government will determine whether or not you have that bona fide relationship. And also noted, the Ninth Circuit had previously said that the Trump administration could go forward with those vetting procedures and uh, analyzing how foreign governments actually vet people who might come over here or that visa process. The Supreme Court once again alluded to that. So a bit of a mixed bag here at the Supreme yeah. Court and fair to say, Poppy, something that a lot of court watchers didn't necessarily expect. We, we expected perhaps it would be a blanket denial or a blanket denial of the stay and then we'd just yeah. wait for arguments. But now it turns out the Trump administration can go forward with parts of this travel ban. They, they uh, and let me bring in the man patiently standing to your side who I failed to introduce at the beginning, CNN contributor Steve Vladek. Essentially what the court did here is they split the baby when it comes to the stay, which as Jeffrey Tubin rightly pointed out is rare. Now the question that Jessica brought up that is apt is, so who decides what a bona fide relationship is? Yeah, I mean, this is the real question, Poppy, and I think in his dissent, Justice Thomas, joined by Justice Gorsuch and Justice Alito, made a big deal out of how hard it's going to be for the Trump administration to actually implement this ruling between now and October when the Supreme Court hears argument on the case. You know, you're going to have individual government officers deciding which kinds of connections are sufficient and which kinds of connections are not sufficient. That may be a satisfying compromise among the six justices in the majority. It's going to be pretty hard to implement on the ground. So, Jeffrey Tubin, those government officers, many of them officials of the Trump administration, making this decision, so prepare for more lawsuits about whether this is a bona fide relationship or not, whether you can come to the U.S. or not? That's true, but, you know, immigration officers have to make decisions like Every this day. all the time. So, so it's not, I mean, yes, it will be difficult, and yes, there will be controversy, but it is not like they are giving immigration officials a job to which they are not suited or in which they don't have experience. Right. This is something that they do. What do you think, Jeffrey, the uh, attorneys for the Trump administration who argue these cases, which we heard the audio from at least, uh, from the Fourth Circuit and the Ninth Circuit, what can be learned from the failures in those courts and applied to their arguments in front of the Supreme Court? Well, I, I think the, uh, the winning argument for the Trump administration, if it's going to win, is that this area of responsibility, immigration, is one that is reserved to all presidents of the United States. That the, 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 the loss, the, the Congress has said immigration, deciding quotas, deciding mm -hmm. standards, is given to the executive branch. So this case is not about Donald Trump, it's about separation of powers. It's about whether presidents can continue to exercise the power that Congress has given them. But that statute has also been amended, if you will, over time to also say, but you cannot use it to discriminate. Correct. And under the law, the, the words of the executive order, there is no reference to Muslim, there is no reference to any religion, there is no preference for Christians as there was in the earlier executive order. So 
um, they will argue for analyzing simply the text of the executive order um, and the powers of all presidents, not just Donald Trump, try to disengage the human being Donald Trump from the institution of the presidency, that will likely help. This is, to be clear for everyone watching, travel ban 2.0, if you will. That is the unofficial name of it, right? right. But you bring up the first travel ban, which uh, did separate by, uh, you know, religion. It gave special privileges to, to Christians. Christians coming into the country. Persecuted yeah. Christians, exactly. Can that bear at all on what the court weighs in deciding on this travel ban? Can they look at all to the first travel ban for intent? Uh, they can decide to do what they want. I mean, it, it is, it, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, play in the joints. Uh, you know, th this will be one of the issues that's argued in the case, mm -hmm. is do you look at intent? The Trump administration will say, you don't need to look at intent, just look at the order. Mm -hmm. The order says nothing about religion. The order refers only to six countries. Um, and um, that's all that you need to know. The um, plaintiffs will argue you can't look at those countries in isolation and you mm -hmm. can't look at, look at this case so without the, the identifying the president's and candidate Trump's motivation.